Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about house plant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And firstly, I hope you all had such a wonderful Christmas. I realised I didn't get around to making that much Christmassy content this year, so I thought in this video I would go back through and look at my video that I made this time last year about my favourite plants of 2021, look at them now, see what's changed, see how my opinion has changed as well, and then take you through some of my top plants from 2022. So yes, I hope you enjoy it. Let's Let's get into it. So I haven't actually watched this video back since I made it and I do find watching my older videos a little bit awkward, embarrassing. I just wasn't that comfortable on camera a lot of the time. And I think I was just trying to be like a presenter, so it's gonna be a little bit awkward, but I don't remember actually a lot of the plants that I included in this. So it's gonna be quite interesting to watch back. I've got my laptop here so we can watch it together. But yeah, let's, let's go. For the last 12 months, the first one on my list is my Anthurium vichii. It's one that was on my wish list for such a long time and I finally got it a couple of months ago. So my Anthurium vichii, I am so sad to say, is one of my plants that I don't have anymore. I didn't mean to, but I killed that plant. I basically, I let it dry out way too much and then I watered it and I think because it was so dry, it just, it rotted straight away. The roots completely rotted. I treated it for root rot and uh, I was gonna say it started to look better. It didn't start to look a lot better. And then the chunk of the plant rotted and eventually I had to give up, which is such a shame. And looking at it now, I do, I do love that plant so much. It's another one that's back on my wish list for this next year because it brought me so much joy. I just loved the loved the texture of the leaves. I honestly, I just loved that plant and I was gutted when it didn't make it. But yeah, so fingers crossed I can get myself another one and I can do a little bit better next time. <laughs> Bad plant parent. <laughs> I've had wish list plants before that I've got really, really hyped up about, and then when I actually get them, it's almost a bit of an anticlimax. But with this one, I literally look at it every single day, like, I can't believe I have this plant. That almost kind of like ruffled texture of the leaves is just so gorgeous, and it's honestly just the most beautiful plant. It's also just such a chilled, easy to care for house plant. It's one that I literally haven't had to worry about at all. Chilled, easy to care for house plant. I mean, to be honest, it was. A lot of my anthuriums are very low maintenance and very easy to care for but I think for that reason I just got a little bit complacent and I was like no it'll be fine without a water for a little while and a little while turned into a long while and then I was like oh god I really must water this plant now I think I might have been scared about over watering it I think that was probably it. I was probably so scared that I would kill it from over watering so I went totally the other way and just just did not water it enough and then as I say when I did it rotted so yeah, it was easy. It was very easy. And I think if I just paid a little bit more attention to it and had been a little bit more vigilant, then it would probably still be in my collection now. <laughs> Rest in peace. So if you're wanting to add more kind of rarer plants to your collection but are worried about killing them, then I would definitely recommend this one. I found my Vichii fairly cheaply on eBay. I've had very, very mixed experiences with buying plants on eBay before, but luckily this time I found the most amazing seller and it arrived literally in perfect condition. I've got to say, I have actually found quite a few, I think maybe five or six plants this year on eBay. And touch wood again, I've had really, really good experiences. I... As I, as I said in that video, I have had some very bad ones in the past and I've had plants that have turned up looking nothing like they did in the pictures. But what I've done now is I've just saved sellers that I like. And I think, I think I'm right in saying I might have actually bought another plant off the same person that I got my Vichii off. And I've come, I've come, I've come away. <laughs> I've got some really lovely things that I'm really happy with. I got a beautiful Hoya Wilbur Graves cutting on eBay for under 20 quid recently, which I think is just such a fantastic price. And yeah, I, I'm definitely using eBay more nowadays for plants. In fact, yeah, that's definitely something to say. This year, I've done a lot more independent sales. I've bought a couple from garden centers and I've got some online, but the majority I found on Facebook groups, Etsy, Etsy is, oh my goodness, amazing for plants and, and eBay, so yeah. Next on my favourites list for 2021 is my Philodendron Ernestii. I haven't talked about this one that much on here yet, but honestly, I'm absolutely obsessed with it. It's got a really similar kind of indented vein pattern to the last one, which 
I don't know, there's something about that that just really gets me. It's just gorgeous. It almost doesn't look real. So I totally agree. The Ernestii is still one of my favourite plants. It is so incredibly beautiful. The one that you're, the clip of it that you're seeing in this video here. That's the other thing to say as well. So the reason that I'm not actually showing you the plants in person in this video is because at this point when I was starting to kind of do YouTube a little bit more, take it a little bit more seriously, I wasn't able to kind of film what I wanted to at my mum's house because we were all working around each other. So a lot of these videos are actually filmed at my friend's house. I would take all of my plants and I would go over there, I'd film my videos for the week, the month, and then, yeah, then I would come back and long to be in my own space, which I now am, which is so lovely. But yeah, making me quite nostalgic thinking about that. But yeah, so the plant that you're seeing here, the Ernestii, although yes, it is the same plant that I've got, the one that I, in fact, I'll get it and I'll show you it. So my Ernestii now, this is what she's looking like. I did include her in a video recently as well, but this is actually made up of propagations from that plant because I decided to chop it back. It was, it was doing okay, but it just wasn't looking as healthy as I thought it could be. I knew it needed a moss pole and the main stem had started to grow in a really bizarre kind of like twisty growth pattern because I hadn't properly supported it. So so yeah, I chopped it up, I propagated lots of it, and this is her now. I do still have some sections from that mother plant that are in my bedroom at the moment, and I'm thinking I'll probably chop and propagate them as well at some point, because she's just looking so healthy and gorgeous now. I, yeah, if I could get an even fuller, thicker plant of this going, then, oh wow, that was a loud car. I'm not using my microphone, so if you get a little bit of Christmas traffic going to and fro, then that is why. But yeah, I still love this plant. I would still probably say it's on my favourites list. So yeah, not much has changed there. It's a ridiculously fast growing plant. I actually bought my one as a cutting about four months ago and it's already given me two new leaves third one on the way, which at this time of year is amazing. On that note, with this plant, if you're torn between getting a cheaper cutting or a more expensive, well-established plant, I would honestly recommend going for the cutting because they do grow so quickly. Yeah, I still 100% agree with that. If I had the choice between buying a big full plant of this or buying a cutting, knowing how quickly it grows, I would still absolutely go for the cutting. And they're still not that common, those plants. Like, I think you probably get a cutting for under 20 quid, but they're not one that you see about a lot. So if you are tempted by kind of a more expensive full plants, then as I've said, and I've said, then I would, yeah, I would definitely go for the cutting. This next one isn't particularly rare, but it's the bird of paradise. These are one of the first plants I fell in love with, even before I knew anything about house plants, just because I loved the look of them. And so after years of pining after it, I finally got one in 2021. Yeah! God, it is crazy looking at the picture of my bird of paradise there and looking at it now. I, I will have to put a clip of it in because I can't actually bring it over because it's got so big and it is, it is a plant that I wanted for ages and it is one that I really do appreciate. And I was gonna say, I guess I, yeah, maybe it is on my favorites list. I think I love it. I love it so much. And I have said before, I kind of think of all of my plants as my favorites because if I'm not in love with them, then usually I don't keep them in my collection. I'll pass them on to someone else that does want them. But it is a plant that is is just amazing. And I, I look at it all the time. I'm always dusting its leaves and I enjoy caring for it. I think the new growth in it is also really, really rewarding because it's so dramatic. Like the leaves, if you've got one, then you'll know the leaves come up in this kind of big, big kind of spiral and then they break out and they just, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, mine have anyway. So yeah, I, I do love it. It is a proper jungly plant and to look at it then in that picture and to look at how far it's come until now, just, it makes me so happy. I do love, I know I do a lot of these kind of growth comparison updates and stuff like that. And I really enjoy making those kind of videos, but I also just really enjoy putting things side by side and seeing their progress. I guess it's what parents must feel when they look back at pictures of their children and they're like, oh, we did well. It just makes me feel like a really good plant parent and yeah, it just makes me feel really proud. Again, this one's super low maintenance. I've only had to water mine about every three weeks or so, so far. So as long as they've got enough light and humidity, they are pretty easy plants to keep happy. If you're looking for something to give your house that really kind of tropical, jungly vibe, then these ones are absolutely perfect. They can also grow to be huge, which I'm really hoping my one will one day. She's already given me two new leaves in the time that I've had her, so I'm really excited to see what she's going to do when the weather clears up a bit. But yes, I will keep you updated. 
yeah, over summer, and I was living back at my mum's at that point, and she was in the conservatory, which, oh my goodness, obviously just got the best light ever, but she did give me some insane growth. I'm, I'm trying to think, I need to look back at that picture. I'm trying to think how many leaves she's had in the time that I have had her. One, two, three, four. I'm not gonna count the little ones at the bottom because I have pruned some of them back, but she's now got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine big leaves and then some little ones, I think some little ones or one from where I'm sat at the bottom. So yeah, I, again, I've said it before. I, I never know whether to call this one a fast growing plant because I don't think it's super, super speedy, but I just think the scale of its growth just changes the appearance of the plant so much that I almost do think of it as a fast grower, if that makes any sense at all. But yeah, I, I love it. I really love that plant. I wasn't sure whether or not to include this next one, just because it's also the plant that I'm struggling with the most at the moment, oh, but I, know I still love it, so I thought I would. It's the Anthurium warrochianum. I showed you guys this one about a month ago when I first got it. It'd been on my wish list for absolutely ages, and then I stumbled across one really, really cheaply on Etsy and decided to take the risk. I should not have taken the risk on that plant. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the Warrochianum, and I do have one back in my collection, but that one didn't make it. That one had a very, a very sad story. It, it arrived, it wasn't looking great even when I got it. I could see that bits of the leaf had been trimmed back, and I kind of went, okay, well, there's obviously something going on. I eventually got around to looking at the roots and it was potted in. In fact, I'll show you my one now. So she is just beyond beautiful, way more beautiful than my other one, but this is her now. And the pot that I got the other one in, the one in that video, it was a very similar pot to this. It was a very long, tall pot. And her root system was so tiny, like the plant itself was a lot smaller than this one, but the root system was only about that big. And it was just, it was packed with like really, it, what looked to be very bad quality soil. There was no aeration in there. It just kind of looks like, like, I don't know, really cheapy, like miracle grow or garden soil or something like that. And the roots had started to rot. They'd been completely surrounded by moisture and water that they couldn't absorb. And I think again, probably a similar situation to my Vichii, which I know was all me, but a similar situation to that. It just started to rot and there wasn't a lot I could do to save it. And I did try everything. But yeah, then I picked this one up at the Rare Plant Festival earlier this year. And this is her new leaf that is still hardening off. And I think it is so beautiful. So although I am sad to look at that and think about the plant that didn't make it, and I know that you just shouldn't think of plants like replaceable because I mean, each plant is individual and special and you should always try and save a plant as opposed to throwing it away and going to buy another one. I did all I could. I literally did all I could and I do cherish this plant. I really do. And I'm so glad she's doing so well for me. Definitely one on my favorites list as well. It arrived with some underlying issues, the main one being root rot, which has been really difficult to treat because its root system is so small. It's one that I'm being... Yeah, you can see the root system there. That was literally it. And also, if you think of anthurium roots in general, they are quite kind of thick and beefy. This one just, yeah, there was, there was pretty much nothing to work with, very cautious with, and I'm so scared about losing. So yeah, I'm hoping this year has some magical recovery plan up its sleeve for it. It does. The Etsy seller that I bought it off, who I won't name, had a load of really, really rare, really cheap houseplants and probably about a 50-50 mix of amazing and terrible reviews. So really I should have been more wary, but I just gave it the benefit of the doubt because it was an amazing deal. That's something that I've definitely, I mean, I knew it already, this is the silly thing, but just like not getting swayed by a good price if reviews aren't great. And I'm not saying that like one bad review or a few bad reviews means that that seller's bad. I think now I'm just a lot more, a lot more vigilant at actually kind of doing my research about where these plants are coming from. And, oh, I've learned a lot this year about plant poaching and stuff like that, which is another thing you really do need to be aware of. But for me, just like really 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 researching really making sure that this seller is reliable that the plants are in good condition that they're not just trying to get them out quickly for a bit of money if the price is so low why is it so low all of that sort of stuff um so yeah but i mean you live and you learn don't you it's just one that I wouldn't have been able to afford at its normal price. They can go for up to about £400, which is crazy. So that's the other thing. I think the price on them, I mean, a price, the price on loads of what were considered rare plants this time last year, the price is really dropping. And although the Barocchianum isn't, I'm trying to think how much I bought her for. I do say in my rare plant festival video, but I can't 
remember exactly. I think it was under 100. I'll, I'll put the price on the screen here. I could be totally wrong about that. But the price is definitely coming down on these plants. And the same goes for lots of houseplants. I think the ones that were maybe, again, considered when I say like rare, I just mean rare because like I, at rare means something different to everybody. And I'm not a massive fan of the term rare plants when you just are like, oh, a really, a really expensive plant. So yeah, if there are ones on your wish list that are like super desirable and maybe a little bit out of your price range yet, I would say just give it a little bit of time because if it's a popular plant, then chances are the price will, like as soon as the demand for the plant goes up, sellers cotton onto that and you will start seeing them a lot more. It's like things like the White Princess, for example, which I'm pretty sure I included in this video. That used to be, I mean, God, a cutting of that plant used to be like, I don't know, 100, 200 quid. It was so expensive. And now you can go into your local garden centre and you can pick a White Princess up for under... I don't know, under 30 quid, which is just really, really crazy. But that is my advice. If you're looking for a plant that you really want and it's a bit out of your price range at the moment, give it some time because chances are the price will come down and it will be more affordable. I found this great bargain and just jumped at it without properly thinking it through. So yeah, remember that people before jumping in headfirst for a good price. Besides the fact that mine's in rehab right now, it is still such a special plant and despite all the struggles it's putting me through, it is still 100% one of my favourites. They're not the easiest plants to care for anyway and are known for being slightly temperamental, so I definitely would not recommend them for beginners. See, that's one thing, I don't know if I actually agree with that now and I don't know if it's just because I've got a really healthy plant and I've had a really good experience with it this time around. I have found it, I mean, as easy to care for as my Anthurium clarinervium. It's it's just been really straightforward. I haven't needed to water it much. I've currently just got mine in moss, like pure moss at the moment, and I do need to transfer it to soil at some point, but I think I'm just treading very tentatively because it's doing well and I don't want anything bad to happen to her, but I, I definitely, I mean, maybe not beginners, just because of the investments, like the money that you have to put in in order to get one, it is still quite high. But I wouldn't say that they're a difficult plant at all. That is just my personal opinion from my experience. If you do decide to invest in one, I would just say, make sure you do your research and get it from a good, reputable seller. Hello. <laughs> oh, hello, baby. Oh, she's off. <laughs> Next up is my Alocasia Black Velvet. Oh, this is another sad one. This is another one that I don't have anymore. So my Alocasia Black Velvet was doing really good things, was growing really well for me, and she started to flower and she produced two inflorescences and I was like, oh, maybe, maybe I'll pollinate her. Bearing in mind, I have never done any kind of Alocasia pollination and I really didn't know a lot about it. But I collected pollen and I did pollinate her and I think she was still a very, a very young plant at this point. She only has, I think, maybe four or five leaves and usually they need kind of quite mature big foliage to have good enough energy reserves to be able to actually hack that and I think I just sent her into shock that was kind of the beginning of a very a very slippery slope down from there I pollinated her the inflorescences didn't do anything they just kind of started to go brown to look not very happy and die off and in the end I did chop them back but when I did the whole plant just went downhill and there was nothing I could do to save her I did try to take some corms from her but again everything had gone a little bit a little bit mushy and a little bit gross so yeah oh I didn't realize how many plants I lost this year but <laughs> apparently I lost quite a lot of favorites at the beginning of 2021, these plants were actually considered really quite rare and very expensive to buy, but I think just because the demand for them has gone up so much in this past year, I actually bagged mine fairly cheaply. You can now find them for under £10, which is absolutely crazy because this time last year you'd be lucky to find one for under 30 Again, plant prices, yeah, you can now get them for a couple of pounds, which is really, really crazy because I do remember when this was a very, again, rare plant. So very, very scary to think about the monetary value we put on plants when we think that they are rare. They've got the most gorgeous, dark, velvety leaves and are just so beautiful to look at. Alocasias in general can be quite fussy plants, so perhaps, again, not the best beginner plants, but with a proper understanding of what they like and don't like, they're actually fairly chilled once you figure that out. So yeah, just get to know them. God, I'm such a numpty. <laughs> Those dark leaves and white veins just look so dramatic and elegant. I'm absolutely in love with mine. They can also be really fast growing plants if you keep them in the right conditions. 
Another Anthurium that became a true favourite of mine over the last year is Anthurium clarinervium. Similarly to the last one, it's got those beautiful white veins and dark leaves, which is just stunning. This is another rarer Anthurium that is really, really easy to care for. So if you're new to houseplants and want to add something a little bit more unusual to your collection, then I would highly recommend this one. I do still agree with that. I, again, the price of them has come right down. I mean, you can pick an Anthurium Clarinervium up now for like 15, 15 pounds, which, oh my goodness, it's, it's really scary to think about how much pricing changes. And I can't remember, I've actually got three Clarinerviums in my collection now because I absolutely love them so much, but I can't remember how much I bought any of them for, but it was, I think all of them were over 30 pounds. But yeah, they are a really, really sturdy, sturdy, a really hardy Anthurium. I think they would be very good for beginners, especially now that they're, I don't, don't want to say, I was going to say, especially now that they're not quite so expensive, but I don't think you should just, get a plant and then it's the whole like plant waste recycling thing oh it doesn't matter it's not expensive I could buy another one I really don't want to encourage that whatsoever but they are a lot more accessible to buy now and they are not difficult to care for they are very low maintenance don't require a lot of care and usually once you find a spot that it's happy in then it's it just kind of I was gonna say cares for itself it doesn't care for itself you do need to, you do need to water it but yeah it doesn't doesn't need a lot of care they're not the cheapest plants in the world, but again, over this last year, I've noticed the price of them slowly starting to drop. This one was hit really badly with thrips over the summer, but touch wood, she's bounced back, is really, really healthy again, and yeah, long may it last. In this last year, I've also become so fascinated with pollinating anthuriums to create amazing hybrid plants. If you've been watching my videos recently, you will have seen the clarinervium seeds I planted about a month ago. They're some sort of hybrid, I think, but I have no idea what yet, so I'm so excited to see what they turn into. So the clarinervium seeds that I planted did do, they, they all sprouted and I did get little plants from all of them, but I did end up I haven't got any of them anymore, but they didn't die. I gave one to my friend Lottie, I gave one to my friend Amy, and I can't remember what happened to the other one. I gave I gave it to someone, but I, I can't remember who. Um, maybe I plant swapped it. Did I plant swap it? I honestly, honestly can't remember, but I am still very much interested in anthurium pollination. And I was gonna say, I've said already, I've got three clarinerviums in my collection, but I'll just, I'll put some clips in of the other ones, but I'll show you this one. So this is one that has been pollinated and I've thought for a while now, as you can see, it's starting to produce some really, really lovely berries. They're not ready yet. And this has got to be the slowest anthurium to produce berries that I think I have ever met. It's absolutely insane how long this has taken. I think I'm right in saying I pollinated this one about nine months ago or something like that and I ambitiously thought that the berries might be ready for harvest before the plant swap and then I could take some to that and they're still not they're getting there obviously like it's properly chunky and it's getting to the point where you almost feel like you could take them off but I'm obviously going to wait for them to ripen but the weight of it now it is it's really really heavy and it's doing well and the plant itself is doing well. This is one that's grown a little bit differently to my others. This one is much more kind of compact in its structure and my other ones are kind of a lot, I don't know, the petioles are a lot longer so it makes them look a little bit more, I think a little bit more elegant, but I still love this plant. I'm super excited to be able to harvest the berries. I'm hoping it's not gonna be that much longer, but yeah, we will see. This is also, I I mean, again, like I, I don't have it on my favourites list for this year, but it is, it is a beautiful plant. It is one that I love. I've got three of them. I clearly love it. But it's just one that I think I'm just very used to now. Like the striking foliage and all that sort of stuff still makes me very happy. It still brings me a lot of joy, but it's maybe, I don't know, maybe not one that excites me as much as it did when I first got it. Is, is that fair to say? I'm not sure if that's I'm not sure if that's fair to say or not. I love all of my velvet leaf anthuriums basically, but if I was to put this next to my Warrockianum, for example, which is exciting me beyond belief at the moment, then that that one would be up there on my favourites. But that is not to say that I don't love this plant. And yeah, I will definitely keep you updated with the harvest of these because I'm very excited about that.
If anyone's interested in anthurium pollination or growing them from seeds or seed germination, anything like that, then do let me know and I'll definitely make some content on it this year because I genuinely find it so fascinating and definitely want to start doing it more. Also, let me know any other types of plants that you've pollinated or grown from seed because I would absolutely love to get some ideas off you guys that I could try this year. I just find watching myself so awkward and I don't know... I don't, like, why is it so cringy? Why am I so like, let me know what plants you've pollinated. I mean, like, I do want to know, but I just don't like, I don't know, I don't want that. <laughs> This next one, again, isn't rare in the slightest, but it's just one of my all-time favourites and has firmly remained on my top 10 list this year. It is the String of Pearls. When I say rare, when I use the word rare in this context, I think what I meant here was it's one that you just don't see every day. It's one that you can't easily pick up in a garden centre. I, I think that's what my definition of rare was at this point. It's been a favourite of mine for ages and has given me so many little babies from propagations over the years. When kept in the right conditions, these plants can grow like crazy and be really, really hardy. Yep, the String of Pearls is a constant favourite in my collection. I really love it. And actually looking at it there, although it looks healthy, it's so weird to see how like sparse and leggy, well not leggy, but just it hadn't, it hadn't filled out. And that pot that it's in there is the one that I've actually now got my Baroque Vianum in. And again, I'll get my String of Pearls and show you it now. So yeah, I did actually move this one into a slightly smaller pot just because I didn't think she needed all the depth. And since I've done that, she's she's been growing really well for me. And as you can see, she has filled out a hell of a lot. The one thing that I have noticed since I've moved here, because again, this one was in the conservatory before, it was used to so much light, so many hours of light. Just, I mean, it is a high light plant, but although my new place here does get good light, it's obviously not getting quite as much as it is used to because if you look, you can see it's got these little bits that are kind of stretching up and looking looking for light. And this is what I say about leggy growth if your plant isn't getting as much light as it needs. And at the moment, I don't think this one quite is. I think I might need to think about repositioning her somewhere or maybe getting her under a grow light. But nevertheless, as I say, she is a plant that I really like. I bang on about texture in plants all the time and the texture of this one is just so gorgeous. So yeah, I really love her and I still say she's healthy, but maybe not as healthy as she could be. I think I've got some things to work on, but yeah, I love her. They are, however, ridiculously sensitive to overwatering, and I think that's where a lot of people tend to have issues. I always just think of less as more with my one, and touch wood, she's doing really, really well. She even flowered a few weeks ago under my new grow lights, which she's never done in winter before. So I think that definitely helped bump her up onto this list. They're such easy plants to propagate. There's a few different ways that you can do this. I have made a video with more details on this. But yeah, they're just great plants to have if you want to add more plants to your home for free. See, I'm propagating in water there, and nowadays when I propagate String of Pearls, I literally just prop straight into soil, and I found, I mean, it's just so much easier doing it that way. I've got a little one over here that I propagated in soil, and as you can see, it's taken really well. I think I only propped about three or four strands, and it's just kind of filled itself out. I know it could be fuller, but I, I'm pretty happy with how it's doing, and... I think with water propagation, yeah, it's it's great and you can get them to root quite easily that way. But the thing is that I found is the roots are so spindly and thin. Often when you transfer them straight to soil, they kind of go, ah, and they don't really know how to cope and adjust. So yeah, I prop, I mean, pretty much all of my succulents now in soil. So yeah, as I say, not the rarest or perhaps most exciting plant on my top 10 list, but it is a solid favourite of mine. This next one's another all-time favourite, and the more time goes on, the more and more obsessed with her I become. It's my big variegated Monstera. I'll pop a picture in from this time last year so that you can see how much she's grown in the last 12 months. It's honestly insane. But yeah, although she's not highly variegated, I just love her so much. So yeah, I still adore my variegated Monstera. I also, I mean, I've got a lot of variegated Monsteras. It is one of my favourite plants. My big one I'm talking about, which again, I'll have to put a clip in of because at the moment I definitely can't bring her over here and show you. 
but she is huge and she was a lot bigger but I did actually chop her back when I first thought that I was moving house I was like fantastic I'll just let her grow and grow and grow and then as you all know if you've watched my other videos my first house move all fell through and by that point she'd got so tall that she'd literally outgrown pretty much any space in my mum's house so I made the decision to chop her and I'm really really glad that I did she's still very big but I'm really glad that I made the decision to chop her because what it's done is it's just helped lots of the auxiliary buds down the bottom to push out new growth and now she's just looking a lot fuller and as I say I know she's not highly variegated but to me that doesn't really matter I just I really love her I get my variegation fix from other plants from other monsteras and all that sort of stuff so yeah I'm really proud of her I'm really happy with how she's doing and yeah I've thought about chopping her back to encourage the variegation so many times, but I've come to love her just the way she is. So I'm just gonna chop her when she physically can't fit in the room anymore. I keep picturing my future dream house with either really high ceilings or an indoor balcony and I can just let her climb all the way up the wall one day. Oh, I think I'm in my future dream house or my future dream flat. So yeah, I am now I, one of the things, well, two of the things that I really wanted to find when I was looking for somewhere to live was obviously somewhere with good light, but also I really wanted a place with high ceilings because I've got so many climbing, climbing plants that are getting very big. And yeah, I found, I found my place and she is now climbing the wall. And if I wanted to, I could let her go all the way up to the top of the ceilings. I don't currently have an indoor balcony. I think that's maybe a little far-fetched and maybe a dream for further down the line. But yeah, I have got my, I've got my high ceilings, yay. The variegated monsteras that I've got are albos. I've got a smaller one behind me here and they are really, really easy to care for so long as you make sure that their environment's right. It kind of goes with that saying as well, having shown you my big one, but they are ridiculously fast growing. I've shown you cuttings from my smaller plant before as well. And in general, they're really easy plants to propagate. So, oh my goodness, okay, so that plant that I was propagating there in water, I will put a clip in of what it looks like now because it's, oh, it's just so beautiful. It has had a little bit of, a little bit of malfunction in the time that I've moved but apart from that it's just doing brilliantly it is one of my monsteras that really gives me my variegation fix because it's got such a beautiful balance of variegation and looking at that plant then and looking at it now just makes me really happy Again, if you're debating whether or not to buy a plant or a cutting, I would say a cutting's fine. However, if you're not that experienced when it comes to propagating plants, I'd probably advise getting either a cutting or wet stick that's already rooted. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I think, yeah, I guess I would say that. Um, I do think that they can be growing very easily from cuttings, but equally, again, nowadays, the price of them has dropped so much that you can pick up a full plant for not much money at all. So. I don't know, it's fun growing them from cuttings. I absolutely love propagating plants and growing things from cuttings, but equally nowadays you can, I mean, you can walk into a local garden centre and you can find variegated monsteras a lot of the time, which, oh my goodness, if you had said that to me this time last year, I just wouldn't have believed it because the demand, again, demand was so high. So the sellers listened and they pumped out loads more. But I remember back when I was doing my shop and I really wanted to stock variegated monsteras, I was buying in very little plants for just under a hundred quid to sell on. And that was me selling them on at retail price so that I made profit there. And oh my God, if I had known, if I had known how much the price was going to drop, I think I would have, I would have just sold them very, very quickly. Whereas instead I was like, no, I'll just let them grow and then I'll be able to get way more. And it just didn't really work like that because yeah, they they got so popular and then all of a sudden I was like, oh my God, I have like 50, but not 50, but I have like 20 variegated monsteras. And in fact, one of my friends still has a load of them that he's keeping for me. And we've kind of just decided now that we're just gonna chop, the, I mean, that the plants are good, except they've been chopped and propagated so many times already. So I think we're thinking we're gonna just chop a lot of them up and send out cuttings cheaply and try and try and make a little bit of money back that way. But yeah, it oh God, it really is crazy. Next is my white princess philodendron. I got her at the beginning of 2021 as a small cutting and she has honestly just grown an insane amount in the last year. Again, she's a really chilled, easygoing plant with such beautiful variegation and when kept in the right conditions can be really low maintenance. So I did do a growth comparison update on this one in my last video, if you watched that one, but oh my goodness, the transformation of this plant is absolutely amazing. She's another one that is very difficult to bring over, so I'll put some clips in. 
but I, I'm i really happy with how she's doing. I did say in that other video, she's flowering for me at the moment, which although that's really amazing, I think, I don't, I don't quite understand it. I don't quite know what's going on with it. None of the flowers have opened and she seems to just be a little bit dormant at the moment. She's not putting out that much new growth, which again, I know at this time of year is quite common, but considering the fact that since she started flowering, her growth's got so much smaller and with my pink princess and they've got very kind of similar genes, she hasn't. I'm kind of like, okay, there's something going on here and I need to, I need to do some digging. I think I need to probably chop those flowers back, move her to a higher light spot, although she has got grow lights, so yeah a little bit mystified and I do need to figure out what I'm gonna do with her but then again I look at her here and I'm like she has had an amazing journey so I can't be too upset they're also really great houseplants to propagate I haven't actually tried it with my one yet but I'm tempted to give it a go this year so if anyone wants to see that let me know I say they're really great houseplants to propagate yes like of course you can propagate them they're philodendron but I actually I, I, I still haven't propagated mine, I haven't chopped her, and maybe that's what I need to do. But I don't know how, I don't know why I'm saying here that they're easy to propagate when I've never done it, firstly. But also I know from the structure of them, because their structure does tend to be quite compact as opposed to quite stretched, that can make things a little bit difficult. Sometimes if you're working with another vining philodendron, like for example, philodendron micans or something like that, when they've got quite long, like lengthy internodal spacing, then of course that's gonna be easier because you've got more of a defined point where the node is. Whereas with this, because it is compact, I think it's, I think, I think it's definitely doable. I think I could do it, but I don't know if it would be, something that I'd be like, ah, oh, well, if you haven't propagated much, these ones are easy, you jump in there and do that. I don't think I would say that now. <laughs> these plants are still considered fairly rare right now, although the prices for them are really dropping at the moment. I think again, because the demand for them is so high. I tend to buy most of my rarer plants as either cuttings or wet sticks, just because it's so much cheaper and I really love watching them grow. So the last of my favourites for 2021 is my Philodendron Brantianum. I'm such a sucker for plants with a bluey silvery tint to their leaves just because it looks so unusual and this one definitely does it for me. This is another one that I did a growth comparison on in my Philodendron video, my last Philodendron video that I did. And yes, it is a plant that I really love. I wouldn't say it's on my favourites list for this year, not for, not for kind of any reason. I think it's beautiful, but I think this year my favorites and i guess i was doing it last year as well but my favorites this year i just think about the plants that the plants that i'm just kind of drawn to the most because obviously i care for all of them i do spend time with all of them but there's some where it just kind of becomes just i don't know like a formality looking after them and i'll kind of think oh well, yeah that's nice i'll water it and then i'll put it back and then i won't really pay it much attention whereas my favorites as i say are ones that i am constantly checking on constantly looking at just cannot leave alone those are what I'm gonna be I've shown you some of them already but I'm gonna be taking you through some more of them in a minute before I got my Brantianum which was about three months ago now I think I was slightly nervous because I heard that they were notoriously hard to look after touch wood I'm probably gonna jinx now but touch wood so far she's been super easy I did quite a lot of research into what these plants do and don't like before I got mine and I think Again, on the whole, once the conditions are right, she more or less just likes being left alone to do her thing. I think that's fair to say. I think she has been a relatively straightforward, easy to look after philodendron. She, I have had some issues as well. I've had spider mites several times on that plant. And at the moment, again, I'll put clips in, but at the moment, she's got a few browning tips. I definitely underwatered her in the time that I was moving because I just, I didn't have her. She was at my mum's house. I hadn't brought her here yet. She didn't have a water in about two, three weeks and she was already a bit dry before. So there are some issues, but on the whole, I would say that she is fairly easy. I made her a little moss pole in one of my recent videos. So I'm really hoping that soon she'll start to kind of grip on and climb a bit. What is that moss pole? Why did I think that was a good idea? See, like, <laughs> this wasn't even that long ago. This was only a year ago. But I'm, I'm, I'm blah, what am I saying? I'm basically just creating something there that is built to not hold moisture. Like, I was just wrapping string around a moss on a pole, which you can do. But I mean, God, that must have been so high maintenance. I must have literally had to water that thing every single day. I don't think I kept it on her for long, or I think she outgrew it very quickly. But yeah, just because, of, like, you can't exactly pack the moss in tightly. It can't hold the moisture that you need. I mean, nowadays I either 
do all my moss poles like this with a bit of clear plastic on the back so that it helps to contain the moisture or I just use this um, like chicken wire stuff and I pack the moss in so tightly and then I'll put a cup on top of the moss pole with a hole in the bottom so that I can fill that up with water and it will just kind of constantly hydrate the moss pole. I think I was probably just making like a fancy support here. I don't think, maybe I just didn't, I don't know. I feel like I did know about moss poles a year ago. I definitely knew about moss poles, but maybe I didn't realise how much of a purpose they served and maybe all of the reasons I should have been doing it. Yeah, I think that's probably fair to say. I'm also really tempted to chop and propagate her at some point, but I don't know. I might do that this year too, maybe. I have chopped and propagated my Brantianum so many times, like so many times. And again, I said this recently, I'm just not that precious with that plant because I know that she grows so well. I know she grows so quickly. I just think she's a really beautiful plant. She's a plant that I enjoy giving cuttings of. I know lots of people love the Brantianum and a lot of people still don't have it in their collection. But yeah, I've chopped her, I want to say maybe like 15 times, something like that. I realise that most of the plants I've spoken about so far have been quite rare ones. There's loads and loads of common house plants as well that I absolutely love, but these have just been some wishlist plants that I've obsessed over in the last year. Totally agree with that as well. I know, again, I'm throwing the term rare around left, right and centre, but I, although I've got some plants like the ones I'm going to show you today that are like favourites at the moment or have been favourites of mine this year, I love all of my plants. I really, really do. And there's some that maybe like don't require as much care and some that don't grow as quickly and don't do as much. But all of my plants I love in their own way. And yeah, like it's if I was doing like an actual like favourites video, it would probably be me going through and talking about about 90% of my collection, which would be a fairly long video. I am going to be doing a January houseplant tour, which I'm really excited about. I will be showing you everything in that. But yeah, I kind of have to be a little bit more decisive if I want to, if I want to squeeze everything into one video, unless every one of my videos is going to be like three, four hours long. <laughs> Do let me know in the comments below what your favourite plants have been this year or what your favourite plants are right now. Yeah, to echo what I said just there, let me know what some of your favourite plants have been down in the comments now. And also, if you had any that were favourites last year and that's changed, why has that changed? I find it really fascinating. I find it really interesting. Like, I, I don't know, obviously, like, tastes change and trends change and the things that are available at one time or on the market always kind of vary but I'm f I'm finding this like very interesting to see what my thoughts were on things now and what I would choose as my favourites now because I don't think apart from the Ernestii I don't think any would actually be on my list this year if that makes sense. I had to stop filming because Yoli was asking to go out. I took her out for a walk and got absolutely drenched, hence the costume change. But moving on to my wishlist plants for 2022. Also, I was still at my friend's house when I was filming this and there wasn't much, like I didn't have many plants there. So I was like, okay, I think he needed to use the other room for something. Maybe he was working, I don't know. But I was like, okay, I need to find somewhere with good light. So I like tried to set up this little area and like shove some plants in there to try and attempt to make it look like a planty background because it wasn't my house. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm actually going to be able to take all of these plants off my list, but I am dreaming. I can dream. So top of my list and one that I've wanted for absolutely ages is Philodendron Mane. It's got similar kind of vibes to my Brantianum that I showed you before, but it can grow to be huge and I just love it. So I have had three Philodendron Mane over the past year. I got my first one I think from either Greenspaces ID or Arroyd Market but I think it was Greenspaces ID and I liked it, I really liked it, I struggled a lot with it if I'm being honest, I planted it in pond and it just didn't do great and then I got spider mites and in the end I chopped the whole thing up, took some wet sticks, let them sprout and again I think I, I sold a couple of them and I gave a couple away as presents. And then I did pick up another one at the plant swap, the first plant swap that I went to. And again, I, I don't like, it just, I don't know. I love the look of it when I look at pictures of it, but when I've actually got it in my care, I just don't love it as much as I thought I would. So yeah, that's a bit of an anticlimax, but it is a plant that I got and probably not a plant that I would get again. Again, the Marmee's a crawler. And also I've just said probably not a plant I'd get again. I don't think that's totally true. 
just not one that I've got on my wish list again right now. If I do at some point find one, then if the time's right and I'm feeling it, then I will still get it. But yeah, I was going to say, because it's a crawler as well, I really, although I love crawling plants, I've kind of got to limit how many that I've got because they do take up a lot of space because you grow them in trough planters and as they go along, they tend to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you don't have a huge amount of space, like I, I've got a, a nice size flat, so I'm very happy with my flat, but it's technically only got two rooms. So unless I want literally my whole floor space to become plants, most of the plants that I get tend to be either trailing, hanging or what's that upright? Climbing plants. That's the one. Um, so yeah, yeah, I was surprised that I didn't love it as much as I thought I would. It's still considered fairly rare here in the UK, although I have seen some cuttings going recently that are more affordable. So if I could tick that one off my list this year, I would literally be over the moon. Another philodendron that I'm absolutely desperate to bag is a variegated bell marks. I've already got a standard non-variegated one that I absolutely love, but I just think the variegated ones are so stunning. So I haven't got a variegated bell marks, and although yes, it is a plant that I'd still like to add to my collection at some point, I, I again wouldn't say it's like a wish list plant as much as it was before. I very nearly came away from the last, the, no, sorry, the first plant swap with some bell marks cuttings from Memo, who's House Planty Goodness on YouTube, because he had some beautiful ones. But I don't know, the burning desire for a variegated bell marks is not there in the same way as it was last year. <laughs> You can get small ones nowadays for around 20 to 30 pounds. So I'm really hoping this is one I will be able to add to my collection this year. Fingers crossed, I will keep you posted. I was gonna say as well, I think with some of the wishlist plants that I'm saying like now, I don't, like maybe they're not at the top of my wish list. I don't think it's that I don't still want them at some point. I think it's just because I've I've added so many plants. I'm always adding plants to my wish list, but I've added so many to my wish list this year that they've just kind of been overtaken. Like I've got kind of a priority list on there of ones that are right at the top, ones that are actually attainable, ones that probably aren't, and then just other plants that I really like and love. And I think just because maybe others have overtaken that one, it's it's not right at the top anymore. For ages as well, I've been wanting to get my hands on an Anthurium radicans. I just absolutely love the texture of the leaves. Still want this plant. This is still on my wish list. Still don't have this plant. But yeah, I do really love this one. And like I said earlier, I've become really interested in pollinating Anthuriums. And so I'd absolutely love to potentially cross pollinate that one with one of my existing ones. See, I don't know if that would actually be possible. I, I mean, to be honest, this is me just not knowing enough about pollination and definitely not knowing enough about pollination there. I know there are certain types of Anthurium that you can cross to make hybrids, but also sometimes they're not always compatible. So it's not always possible. And I, I don't know enough about the radicans to know whether or not I could make like a weird like Warroquianum cross radicans cross clarinervium hybridy babies. I've no idea. That might not be a thing. Anthurium regal is another one that I've been ogling over. It's been on my wish list now for absolutely ages. So I this uh, yeah I st so I have this plant. This is one that I got at the rare plant festival. I was over the moon with it. I had wanted it for ages. It was a wish list plant. I'm gonna say I still love it, but it doesn't currently have a leaf. I will have to put a clip in of it, but it's, it's um, yeah, it's not really doing anything for me at the moment. I picked it up at the, at the Red Plant Festival, I brought it home, and literally the day after I brought it home, it's big, beautiful, I only have one, but big, beautiful leaf started to yellow, and in the end I was like, I kind of have no choice, I have to chop it up. I checked the roots, the roots were okay. I did a little bit of chopping, and it has been looking like for, I think the last couple of months that it's giving me a new growth point. You can see it bulging and nothing's happened. Literally nothing's happened. It's like it's just stopped. And I would say that maybe that's because we're in winter at the moment, but it's in my propagation cabinet. It's got really good heat, really good light, really amazing humidity. The humidity in there is literally like 85, 90%. So I don't really know why it's not doing anything for me. And I look at these pictures and I'm like, I still want this plant. I don't feel like I own it because I can't look at it. I can't appreciate it. So yeah, I I want it. And hopefully mine will start doing something at some point soon. But here in the UK, it's still fairly expensive to buy. I've been scouring the internet trying to find berries or seeds for sale, but so far, no luck. They're really hard to come by, but I would absolutely love to grow one myself. So if anyone's got any leads, please do let me know.
I could go on and on about my wishlist plants because honestly my list is huge but I'm gonna finish with this one and that's Alocasia Mellow. I've seen this plant pop up a lot recently and I always really try not to be swayed by things that I see online on social media but is this or is this not the most photogenic plant you've ever seen? So I very, I very, very nearly bought this plant. When was it? I think about five months ago, I saw it in a plant shop and I was like, oh my goodness, I have wanted this one for ages. And then I think it came down to, because I mean, it's not like mega expensive now. Again, the price has come down, but it's still not the cheapest allocation to buy. I think it came down to that and some other plants. <laughs> And I can't remember what that other plant was. But anyway, the other plant won and I decided in the end not to get the Allocation Mellow. I would say it is one that is probably still on my list. I don't think about it as much as I thought about it maybe when I first discovered it. And I do really like it. I think it's really cool. But yeah, again, I don't think the burning desire to have this plant again is there. I was going to say as well, I will be making a completely separate wishlist plants for 2023 video that I think I'm going to put out at the beginning of January. So I'll take you through all of the ones that are currently on my wishlist then because it has changed a lot. I feel like, I feel like my taste in plants has definitely changed, but yeah, my, my wishlist plants on this list here are not not very similar to what they are now. So yeah, I will let you know, let you know when that video is up, I will be making a video on that. The texture of the leaves and the colour of them just make it look like some sort of weird alien plant, which I absolutely love. So yeah, that one is also very high on my list. Yeah, I mean, it is. Do let me know in the comments below what some of your wish list plants are for 2022. I would absolutely love to know and potentially add some of them to my list too. Not that I need any more on my list. It's becoming slightly dangerous. Okay, now I'm just waffling on, so I'm basically at the end of the video, but I found that really interesting, and yeah, as I say, things, a lot's changed in terms of my plants themselves, and, and yeah, just my tastes and my knowledge, <laughs> just lots of things, lots of things, I've learned a lot this year. Um, but I, I was going to spin the camera around and show you some of my other favourite plants for 2022, but before I do, I've got one that I brought over because... This is one that I just wanted to hold up next to my face so that you could see how well it was doing and how big its leaf was. But my Anthurium Magnificum oh, is one that I added to my collection this year. This is one that I bought off Emma when Emma was getting rid of it. And just look at the size of that leaf. It's just given me, I think it's just incredible like absolutely incredible and it still hasn't finished hardening off yet either so that usually means it's still sizing up. I, I don't think I've ever, I've definitely, I've definitely never had an anthurium leaf quite this big and it is just amazing me and I think especially because when I got the plant a lot of its leaves were quite damaged, I which I don't mind, like it didn't really bother me that much but now I'm like not only have I got like the most perfect leaf ever, it's also yeah, it's it's huge, it's perfect, it's gorgeous and it's just oh it's so soft and velvety and I think it's just wonderful. And I know it doesn't have the like striking white veination that like a plant like the Warocvianum or the Clarinervium has, for example, but that like, that doesn't bother me. I just think it's, I think it's beautiful. And I love how that leaf is so, oop, so kind of goldy. It's yeah, it's stunning. So that is another one that is definitely, definitely on my favorites list of this year. And I just cannot wait to see what it does next. It's also got some amazing roots. And to be honest, I mean, anthuriums don't mind being a little bit root bound, but as you can see, I think it might need a repot at some point soon. But yeah, I love it so much. But yeah, cool, right, I'm gonna spin the camera around. I'm gonna take you around and I'm gonna show you a few more favorites for this year. This year, what am I saying? This year, yes, this year. Please excuse the mess, it's at the time of filming this, it's actually Christmas Eve, so I have got lots of people coming over tomorrow, which has just meant trying to get everything organised, which usually means creating a lot of chaos. Um, but so three of my favourites from this year are actually here, I'll just bring them over so you can see them. The first one is my Philodendron Splendid, and I actually had it turned around for a couple of days and its leaves have started going in a bit of a funny direction, but this is one of the ones that I got off memo at the plant swap, the first plant swap, and... It had been a wishlist plant for ages and I'm just blown away by it. I can't believe how well it's done for me this year. It's getting so big and 
I'm just, yeah, totally in love with it. Its leaves are just so luscious and that veination, it almost looks like like very soft bolts of lightning, if that makes sense. I just think it's beautiful and it's a plant that I feel so lucky to own. I'm so excited to watch it grow more for me. Considering how much it's sized up as well this year, I'm kind of thinking like if it keeps going at the same rate, it's going to be pretty insane by this time next year. But yeah, so there's that one. And then another one is my variegated Monstera adansonii. And as you can see, like, look how big its leaves are getting now. They're getting absolutely huge. And the structure of it almost looks quite escaletto ish now. Like, it's not, like, when you see adansonii, unless they're incredibly mature leaves, they don't tend to look this fenestrated and just, I don't know, glorious. I think it's glorious. But yeah, look at the size of her. And considering she only had a few leaves when I first got her as well. Oh, just saw my neighbour and he's probably wondering what on earth I'm doing, talking into my phone and staring at plants. Um, but hello. <laughs> but yeah, I just think it's amazing and it's giving me so much new growth. As you can see, it has got a new leaf there, which might need a little bit of coaxing. Sometimes they do get a little bit stuck, but it seems really, really happy. And it's another one that I'd wanted for a really long time. Very happy to have in my collection and... I could chop and prop. I could chop and propagate this plant at some point when it reaches the top of its moss pole, which is obviously going to be pretty soon, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's another one that I kind of just want to let grow or, again, similar to the Splendid, chop, conserve the growth and let continue to grow. I'm not sure about that yet. Um, but let me just move that one down here and then I will show you the one. I'm sure you know which one this is going to be because, again, I talk about it a lot. I love this plant a lot but my Monstera dubia. So when I first got this plant, it was it was in summer. So it was only maybe uh, five months ago. Is that right? Maybe it was five months ago. It only came to about there and it was on a much smaller plank and I still loved it. This is another one also where the price has come right down. I paid about 90 pounds for mine and now you can get them for like 20 or 30 pounds in the UK, which is crazy. But if you just look at how much the growth has sized up and the maturity of the growth it's giving me now, like, just look at that. And it started to fenestrate as well. And this little leaf that's literally just unfurled has got multiple points of fenestration, which is just amazing. I just think it's the most beautiful plant. And I feel so grateful to have this plant. I feel... I don't know. I, I just, I love the dubia anyway. And I'm going to completely blow my own trumpet now and say, I think my dubia might be the most beautiful dubia I've ever seen. Is that really big headed? Probably. Or am I just a proud parent? I think I'm just a proud parent. But yeah, I, I love her so much. I do, when people come over, I do put her just in between the doors there and she climbs up and looks beautiful there. But obviously, lighting-wise, if I want to kind of continue to achieve that lovely, fenestrated, big growth, being by the window is is the best thing for her. So, yeah, I tend to just keep her turned around, looking out the window most of the time, and then in her display spots when I want people to just admire her. Another one is my Peperomia Hope. I know I have spoken about this plant a lot on my channel. It's one that's very cheap to buy. It's You see it everywhere nowadays, but I just think it is so gorgeous i love i love its little succulent leaves i think it's beautiful my monkey tail cactus behind it as well i would say that is a favorite at the moment it's really hard to be decisive and just pick a few but yeah the peperomia hope is definitely up there and then I'll show you another favourite. I would take you through loads of favourites, but I have done quite a lot of content recently on plants that I'm really loving at the moment. So I don't want you guys to get bored of me talking about all, all of my plants. Um, this is just a side note as well. Okay, let's do two more. This is my Fellow Dungeon Code 69686. I won't say too much about it because you guys know how much I adore this plant. It is, it is just beautiful. It's, yeah, so special to me and I love it so much. I love how it's growing for me, but... Just a little update. Look at the flowers. So it's flowering for me, which is is just really amazing. <laughs> it's really amazing. It's making me incredibly happy and yeah, really can't quite believe it. Um, but that's not the one I came in here to show you. The one I came in here to show you was my variegated alocasia fry deck, which has given me the most beautiful leaf I think I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, just look at how stunning that is. I love this plant anyway, but that leaf is just something else it's amazing and i'm pretty sure i think this leaf 
as you can tell, I think might be getting ready to go. This leaf's got a little bit of yellowing, but I think it might be all right. That's also a very beautiful leaf. I love the half moon leaves. But yeah, that one is just another level incredible. And I feel, I'm saying I feel lucky. I feel so lucky to have all of these, but yeah, that one's really seriously special to me. But yeah, as I say, I will be doing a wish list plants video for 2022 come the new year. So I will let you know some others that are on my wish list then. And I'll keep you updated on all of these ones and maybe do a comparison video next year about these ones. I don't know. If you'd like to see that, then let me know in the comments and I am more than happy to make it. Oh, I'm looking around now and I can see loads more that I could show you and I could talk about, but I'll save them for another video. I'll save them for New Year. But those are, I would say, tip top favourites right now if I had to choose. But yes, I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a lovely New Year. I might try and get another video out before then, but I am not entirely sure yet. So there may be, or there may just be some January videos. But if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video.